In this video, I'm gonna show y'all how to solve rational equations as well as go over some factoring techniques along the way. You'll see some test type examples as well as some common misconceptions that I see a lot of the times with my students. So grab your pencil, get you some paper, and let's get into it. What's good YouTube, it's Alma with the sauce and welcome back to another Algebra 2 tutorial. This one's gonna be about solving rational equations, which is basically just a combination of cross multiplying, finding common denominators with a little bit of factoring in the mix. So as y'all know, uh, the word rational just means dealing with ratios or fractions. So all of these equations, they're gonna have a fraction in it. And so depending on the actual equation, we're either gonna be having to find common denominators to add or subtract fractions, or we could already have two fractions equal to each other, in which case we'll have to cross multiply. So what you do to start kind of depends on the problem that you're getting. For this first example, um, this is one of the cases where you already have a fraction equals a fraction. I know there's different ways to go about it. Personally, the way I prefer to do it, um, whenever you have a fraction equals a fraction, automatically that's my cue to just cross multiply. And what I always like to tell my students to do to not get confused is just put parentheses around any binomials that you have. Going from bottom left to top right, we'll have five times x plus three equals, and then the other way around will be three times x minus one. Before we do anything else, uh, I noticed that I have some coefficient or some number outside of my parentheses, so I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that first. All right, so now that I've distributed, uh, the one thing I notice is that I have an X on both sides. And so obviously we're gonna have to either move the three X to the left or move the five X to the right. Uh, whenever I do this, I, I personally don't like to deal with negatives. So I'm just gonna move whatever is gonna not make me deal with negatives. So in this case, I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides. And then it's gonna make my three X's on the right cancel out. We just combine like terms. So that'll be five X minus three X, what's that two X? plus 15 is gonna equal three. Now that those three X's have canceled out. And then from here on out, it's just a two-step equation. All right, so for this next example, we got A plus 25 over A equals 10. This is one of those examples where you have two fractions being added together. And so we, are, we don't need to cross multiply um, but instead we have to, whenever we add fractions, remember we can only do so whenever we have common denominators. And so right now, if you want to think of it like this, well, you're adding two fractions and obviously our, our denominators are not common. And so we just got to kind of think and ask ourselves, what can I multiply one denominator by or both denominators by to make the denominators be common? And so just looking at it, if I take this one and multiply it by a, then this denominator will become a and then I would have my common denominators. But here's what I see a lot of people do. They're like, all right, if I take my my one and multiply it by a, then I'll have common denominators. But what you're doing is at this moment, you're changing the fraction. You no longer have a over one. You have a over a. And so to make sure you have the same fraction, you're going to have to multiply the numerator by the same thing you multiplied the denominator by we're not changing the fraction because technically, since we're multiplying by a over a, remember anything divided by itself is one. So all we're doing is taking this fraction and multiplying it by one. The only reason we do that is because now, whenever I have my a times one, that'll give me a, and then that matches with the other denominator of a. So now we have common denominators. So first what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna multiply everything out in my first two fractions. So on top I have a times a, and that's gonna give me a squared over a times one, which is a. And then I'm gonna add my 25 over a. And then that's still gonna be equal to 10. Now, since I have common denominators, remember, I can add across the top, and then whatever's in my denominator just stays as one denominator. So I'm basically taking these two fractions and kind of consolidating them into one fraction. So adding across the top, I'll have a squared plus 25, and then on bottom, I'll just have my common denominator of A. And then again, that equals 10. All right, and so now what you gotta realize is on the left side, I have a fraction, and on the right side, I don't. Now, there is a couple ways to do this. One thing I could do was put this 10 over one and then cross multiply. You can totally do that. Um, but one thing that I think is a little bit less work is if I just 
do whatever it takes to get rid of this fraction. Or in other words, make my denominator cancel out. And so what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna put parentheses around this. And I noticed that if I multiply by an A on top, that's gonna cancel out with this bottom A. But you have to remember, whatever you do to one side, you gotta do to the other. So if I multiply the left by A, I gotta multiply the right by A as well to keep it balanced. So now that those A's are gone, I have A squared plus 25 equals 10A. All right, and so now I do have A's on both sides of the equal sign, which is a problem. I'm gonna wanna move this 10A to the left side, and I'll do that by subtracting 10A from both sides. So now that those two 10A's are gone, I'm gonna have zero on the right, which by the way, since we have something squared, we know we're dealing with the quadratic. And in my opinion, it's best to solve for quadratics when one of the sides is equal to zero. So that works out. So on the left, I have my a squared minus 10a plus 25 equals zero. And now this is where some of those factoring techniques come into play. Because I have a, a quadratic, which is a trinomial, and I'm just going to factor that by thinking of two numbers that multiply to give me 25, but add up to get negative 10, negative 5 and negative 5. All right. So now from this point, I notice that I have two factors that I have to each separately set equal to zero. And this one kind of works out nice because those two factors are the same. So really, I only have to set one of those factors equal to zero and then solve for A. And so, I mean, you, yes, you can add five to both sides, but obviously we already can see that A equals five. Uh, a couple of things that I see students go wrong with this one is, first of all, they know that they have to get common denominators right here. So they'll multiply by A, but oftentimes they'll forget to multiply the numerator by A as well. Another thing that I see a lot of people mess up on is whenever they get rid of this fraction, yes, you have to multiply by A to get the bottom A to cancel out, but you always got to remember, whatever you do to one side, you got to do to the other side. So a lot of people forget to multiply both sides by the same thing. And then lastly, you just have to, to recognize that this is a quadratic. So it's good that we have it equal to zero. And then we just have to factor like we do all of our other trinomials. All right, so this one is kind of more likely something that you might see on a quiz or a test. Um, it is a lot, but all right. So for this one, a couple things here. Uh, just by looking and observing, I see that this denominator right here, they have a common factor of an X. So before I do anything else right now, I'm just gonna factor that out. There's a number of ways that I could go about this. I see I have something being subtracted from something else on the right side. So what I could do is I could put this over one, multiply top and bottom by X, and that would give me common denominators. I can consolidate them into one big fraction on the right and then cross multiply, that's totally fine. Some people might actually prefer that, but I'm gonna show you the other way to do it too. It's just a matter of preference. So some people might find this method easier than I'm about to do. Others might find the way I just said easier as well. Um, so what I'm about to do here is I'm kind of gonna eliminate as much fraction as I can. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of my three terms and multiply them by the greatest factor that everything can go into. And so basically what that means is x times x minus 5 is kind of the biggest factor in the denominator that I'm dealing with. So I'm going to multiply everything by that and some of the stuff is going to cancel out. So basically I'm multiplying everything in the numerator by x times x minus 5. I'm taking this and I'm multiplying it by x times x minus 5. And then I'm taking this and multiplying it times x times x minus 5. All right, so it, look, it does look confusing, but I'm not really changing anything because I'm multiplying everything, both left and right sides, by the same thing. And so the reason I do this is a lot of stuff is going to cancel out, or at least simplify. So that is going to cancel out with that. And then over here, I see an x on top and an x on bottom. So those are going to cancel out. And then over here, nothing really cancels out, um, so I'm gonna just leave it like that. And so what I'm left with is one is gonna be equal to, now, since these x's cancel out, the only thing I'm left with is a numerator of x plus seven times x minus five, and then minus one times all of that is just itself. So I'm gonna say minus 
x times x minus five. All right, so it's still kind of a little bit complicated, but at least we got rid of the fractions. And so I see some stuff being multiplied, so I'm just gonna kind of simplify my right side and then see what I end up with. All right, so just a typical foil right here, I got x times x, that's gonna give me x squared. And then I'm gonna have negative five x plus seven x, so that's gonna give me a plus two x. And then seven times negative five, that's gonna give me negative 35. All right, now minus, if I distribute, I'm gonna have minus x squared. And then I'm also distributing this negative x to this negative five to have plus x times five, which is just five x. All right, so what I notice now is that I have an x squared minus an x squared, that's gonna cancel out. And then my two x plus my five x, I can combine those like terms. All right, so just like that, I've already broken it down to a simple two-step equation, so. All right, so that's gonna wrap up the video. Hopefully that tutorial helped. If it did, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. If this is your first time at the channel and y'all wanna see some more math tutorials, make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that bell. I left y'all some problems to try on your own, work them out, and then head over to my IG to see those problems worked out. And with that being said, I'll catch y'all in the next video.